Social media companies could soon be held responsible if children become addicted to the platforms. A first in the nation bill headed for a vote in California State Senate. It would apply to companies like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, but not to streaming services or companies that offer email or text messaging services. According to the Addiction Center, an estimated 27 percent of children who spend three hours or more a day on social media show symptoms of poor mental health. And now for today's Rush Hour Roundtable, where we discuss it all all first, let's introduce you to our panel today. We have senior national correspondent Brian Enton, Capri Cafaro. He is the former minority leader of the Ohio State Senate and the host of Eat Your Heartland Out podcast and radio show. And finally, Alicia Krause, conservative commentator, speaker, and host of the Washington Examiner Newsmaker Series. Welcome to all of you. So the big question, should social media sites be held accountable when kids become addicted? Brian, let's start with you. Well, you know, we did this segment on Banfield uh, a couple of nights ago. Mark Zuckerberg didn't even let his kids go on social media, Facebook or Instagram, uh, until they were 13. It is obviously a problem for kids. They get addicted. Uh, it seems they should be held uh, responsible. I mean, they've got to do something. Uh, but at the same time, I think parents have to keep an eye on their kids, you know, take the devices away at night. At the end of the day, it's the parents who are in the house. I think they have a lot of control, too. Capri, what do you think? You know, this is a difficult call because, you know, I think about this, you know, from a legislative perspective as a, as a former state senator and thinking about, you know, how you deal with legislative uh, remedies and where they are appropriate and where they're not. It makes me think a little bit about, you know, the, the issues surrounding, you know, tobacco, right? And the lawsuits that, you know, tried to hold, hold big tobacco um, uh, accountable for you know getting people addicted for you know knowing the ingredients and this sort of thing and obviously some of the issues as well around marketing um you know both cigarettes as well as alcohol um to younger people and so i think there is a little bit of a balance here where you know where can government place some parameters um, but at the same time, government cannot alone solve this problem. You know, maybe it's about a carrot and a stick, you know, creating some kind of penalties uh, to hold social media um, companies accountable. But at the same time, you know, no different than cigarettes or alcohol. If somebody, you know, can go ahead and get them for, for kids and they're still going to have access, they may still get addicted. So it is about a community effort and ensuring that people are complying, ensuring that parents, caregivers and others, uh, schools and whatnot are involved. So I think it's a delicate balance because we do have to remember, and I say this, as I said, even as a formal lawmaker, that government cannot solve all of your problems, but they can be part of the solution. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the California Senate. Alicia, what do you think? Do you agree? Um, I, a mix of all of the above. And I'd also add that studies have shown that the, even for adults, how addictive social media can be, even for adults that don't have addiction, um, the addiction gene, which I think is something that exists or are predisposed to having addiction. And it's because the things that we see that we like give us a little dopamine hit. When people like what we have to say or post, it gives us a little dopamine hit. I think for far too long, parents and society have, as a whole have tried to get all of these dopamine hits from a screen and COVID didn't help the next generation with that because of the additional time that they were spe spending on a screen. I think you're seeing an increased number of schools and rightfully so removing screens from the classroom because they're not necessary. So if your kid's at school for eight hours a day and then you're getting them outside for a few hours a day, they should not be spending three hours a day on a screen. And I don't trust the government to understand the limitations and ramifications of what they would do. And I always kind of settle down to the shoe on the other foot. I don't like it if the left is trying to do this to, to organizations and private companies. I don't like it if the right is trying to do it either. The thing I will say the government should continue to do, though, is look at places specifically Instagram and TikTok and how the algorithm is serving up unnecessary and inappropriate ads to minors. That's something that they should start with. Well, Brian, what do you think about that? Because there have been studies and testimony that have shown that these social media companies do use these algorithms and these devices that that they know are addictive and that they know cause depression and suicide and eating disorders. And, especially young girls. 
Yeah, look, I think that we think, oh, we're users. We like going on Facebook. We, we're using this product. No, they're using us. I think people forget yeah. it all the time. We're their little data animals. Like they are just studying every little thing we do and every little thing we like and everything thing that we click. They want us to be addicted. The more of us that join these social media sites, the more money they make, the more data they harvest. And it's the same thing with kids. They love knowing what kids like. They can sell it to advertisers. They can study it and figure out what they're going to like when they're adults. Um, so I just think we have to be so, so careful. And again, I think it falls back on the parents at the end of the day. Um, you know, take the devices away. Maybe don't let your kid have Facebook. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg won't let his own kids have Facebook. What do you think that says? Well. And Capri, what do you think about that? I mean, Yes, it would be great if parents could monitor everything perfectly for their kids, but a lot of parents don't even understand, you know, these social media sites. Right. You know, look, I mean, parents uh, have, uh, they're wearing a number of hats. Uh, not everyone has the uh, ability and opportunity to uh, monitor their children 24-7. That's not anything new. I mean, I think what we're seeing is kind of the, the next iteration of some problems that have existed in modern society. You know, what you know, what are kids watching on television? Are the parents there to deal with it? What, I mean, I come from the generation of the, you know, Chipper Gore, explicit lyrics on the two live crew, C-SPAN. Uh, hearings about the record industry, right? And so, you know, so where are the parents? Are they gonna stop you from buying that tape or CD at the record store? And yes, I said tape, I am that old, <laughs> um, you know, and so, <laughs> Yeah, but, but these are legitimate issues where, you know, it is this balance of, um, you know, where is the line being drawn? We're just seeing this, uh, you know, manifest itself. I think the big difference is what was just recently mentioned about the fact that, you know, we are their little, you know, sort of, uh, we are the product. They want to know all of our information. They're data mining off of us. That is somewhat different than, you know, television or the music industry or fashion magazines that have the, the that have had the exact same kind of impact, maybe not on as large of a scale, but, you know, girls being upset over what they see, you know, on the cover of a magazine as not being realistic, no different than what we see on filters on Instagram. It's just, you know, that's version 2.0 now. And Alicia, to you, you talk about government not interfering and parents should take the responsibility, but I, I wanna put that question to you as well. Can parents even keep up? I mean, maybe they have good intentions, maybe they're trying their best, but can they keep up with all of this? Yeah, listen, I'm not a Luddite, but I have an almost nine-year-old and I know that she has friends with cell phones and that's not gonna be allowed in the Krause house. I was speaking to a friend the other day with a 13-year-old and she's like, my 13 year old takes a flip phone to and from school. We do not allow her to have any social media. And if she gets caught on it, then she's grounded and there's consequences. I think that unfortunately with this generation, my generation, I do remember cassette tapes, you know, of the, the OG MTV days, you would see a magazine, you'd see Britney Spears, you would compare yourself to her, but it wasn't constantly in your face all of the time. So this is something that we're gonna have to deal with, I think not just now, but going forward. And I'd like to circle back to the COVID conversation of the depression and anxiety and mental and emotional health issues from isolation and kids turning to a screen instead of their peers and their friends and their teachers and their family. That's a bigger problem that we have as a culture. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.